and welcome to Fully Charged News. Now, there's been uh, some extraordinary news, uh, some really uplifting and exciting, uh, some where it's kind of proven what we already knew, but it's proven it beyond all any shadow of a doubt. Uh, it's like there's a conspiracy theory 20 years ago that has actually been proven to be 100% accurate. Um, a video was posted very recently, it went around on the Twitters and on the, on the newspaper websites which featured uh, New York Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez grilling a retired Exxon scientists, scientists that had worked for Exxon, the big oil company, uh, back in the late 70s, early 80s. And she was asking them about uh, what Exxon knew back then uh, about the impact of their product, oil, being burnt and whether that would have any um, you know, negative effect on human existence on the planet. It's never about saving the planet. The planet is fine. There's nothing wrong with the planet. It's the little people that live on it that are rather in danger. I keep saying that. It's not about, don't, don't go, oh, I'm buying this wooden toothbrush to save the planet. No, I'm buying it to save me and my children and my children's children. That's much more important. Anyway, she was amazingly sharp and, f and focused in her questions. And they were very, very honest in their answers. Yes, they did know as far back as 19... 77, when even I was young. They knew very, very clearly exactly what was going to happen. They made a projection in 1982 that projected up to the present day. They were spot on. They were absolutely spot on in their predictions that if we burn this much uh, fossil fuel, this is what happens to the atmosphere. Uh, and it goes well above 400 uh, parts per million of carbon in the, in the atmosphere which it has done. That's what they predicted in 1982, and they were absolutely spot on. As one of the old scientists said, we were very, very good scientists. What happened to that information? What did Exxon do with it? Did it publish it? Did it make it public? Did it try and warn governments? No, no. They would spent billions of dollars for the next 30 years making sure no one believed it. It's hard to, to grasp the sheer evil and stupidity and blinkered moronic attitude that those people have. And they still have, and they're still arguing it to this day. They're still telling us, well, the science isn't 100%, shut up, yes it is. And then they'll start to denigrate anything that might possibly challenge their position of global dominance. Electric vehicles being a good example. Uh, there's a lot of activity going on at the moment in, in uh, the United States to discourage utilities, electricity companies in America, from installing electric car chargers, for instance. They're trying to um, fund groups that, 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 will, that will oppose that and, uh, and make, come up with these amazingly spurious uh, arguments about you know, if, you've got a, if, you, if a utility pays for a car charger, then the... Um, then all the ratepayers, all the people who buy electricity have to pay for that. It's not true, but that's what they're saying. And then you hear that and you go, oh yeah, that's not fair. No, no, that's really not fair. No, they're right about that. It goes on and on. Um, but it makes for very good uh, viewing. Uh, she's an extraordinary woman and uh, it, it, I've put a link uh, to the video underneath this news update. Now, last night, very out of the blue, I got an invitation to take part in a Tesla press call. Uh, it's really when they do a very um, uh, small group of journalists that, that join in a, a conversation with Elon Musk. Um, you, can't, you don't see him, it's not a video, it's just audio. Uh, I, was there, I was there kind of worrying before I'm going, oh, does my hair look all right? <laughs> As if, uh, you know, thinking I'd be on video. No, it's not, it's just audio. And they, a lot of them ask questions. I, I didn't ask a question because all the questions I was going to ask were asked by other journalists who are, you know, proper journalists, not like me, but really interesting. And so it was to launch version three of their solar tiles. Now they came out with a big launch, a big glamorous launch of their solar tiles uh, a couple of years ago. And they have installed solar tiles. I've spoken to someone who's got them on their roof and they work. They produce electricity uh, for a very large portion of the day because they cover a large area of roof. Uh, they look like tiles, so they're not like solar panels stuck on top. They're not as efficient. So if you were to cover the, the, the same area uh, of roof, say with just uh, solar PV panels like we're used to, that would produce more electricity than the tiles. But the thing is the tiles look amazing. 
if you're building a new house, this is a really important uh, announcement that they made, if you're building a new house, putting solar tiles on the roof doesn't cost any more than regular tiles. And that is where I get sort of moody about it because uh, in this country we're seeing a huge amount of, of uh, new home building. A tiny proportion of those new homes have anything that you could re refer to as renewable energy installed in as they're being built, which means it doesn't cost any more than building it as it, you know, traditionally. Uh, and, and here's an alternative. Uh, they are, they, I don't know if they're for sale in, the, in Europe yet, but they are in America, but they're building, they're building about a million new homes a year in America. They should all have these tiled roofs. It makes so much sense. To, to retrofit an old building, with these tiles is arguable. I mean, you know, the people have done it, and if your roof needs replacing, it makes sense to put those on. But the new tiles are incredibly strong. Uh, you know, they will withstand enormous amounts of hail and all that stuff. They're stronger than traditional roof tiles. Uh, they last for 30 years. That's the important thing. They, need to, to, they needed to kind of make sure that these tiles lasted 30 years, which is the average lifespan of a tiled roof. Who knew? I've got shingles on my roof, wooden shingles. They have a, a lifespan of about 50 years. So I'm not gonna rip them off and put a load of uh, uh, Tesla solar tiles. So just in case someone wants to ask, are you getting Tesla solar tiles? No, I'm not, not now. I'm a bit too old and I've got a wooden roof and it's fine. Um, so that was, that was a, a really interesting, it was very interesting to be listening to Elon Musk and, and nervously waiting to, <laughs> for my turn to ask a question. And then every single question I'd written down, <laughs> I had about, an hour's warning for this. It wasn't exactly a long thing, uh, but I, it was really good. And he, what is brilliant about him, and I don't often uh, talk about him because I don't want to be a sort of, I don't want this channel to be a Tesla channel, far from it. And we do everything we can to cover every other company that's doing anything in this field as, as much as we can. But what he kept going back to, so a, a journalist would ask a very specific technical question about the, the amount of solar PV per square, solar, uh, energy per square meter and how the wiring works and does that take longer to put on all those things which he answered very well but he kept going back to the big picture that if there, the hundred million homes in the United States all had solar tiles I mean it's a ridiculous thing and he would be the first to admit it but if they did what impact that would have on their energy uh, structure huge massive colossal Forget coal, forget gas, forget fracking. None of it needed. None of it needed. You would be producing so much electricity as long as you could store it as well in batteries. And there's going to be a very exciting episode coming very soon about what I'm doing in this house. Um, uh, but So that was really interesting. Always going for the big picture. What if all cars in the world were electric? How big an impact would that have? What if all cars in the world were electric and could not only drive along, but could also uh, send power out of their batteries as well as take it in. Vehicle to grid charging, which is another thing that we'll be doing a program about because just the other side of that wall, there is a vehicle to grid charger. So this stuff is emerging really quickly. It's transforming the, the, the picture. One of the criticisms I saw uh, on Twitter of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was that, well, where does her glasses come from? They're made of plastic, which is da-da. Where does her pen come from? It's made of plastic. Where does the seat she's sitting on or her clothes? They've all got plastic in them. You know, she's a hypocrite. Really? Really? Because this tweet I saw, and I said, I'm really bad because I didn't record who posted it, but it is so good, I want to read it out. Because it's always that criticism. Well, it's all right for you living in your celebrity bubble. I don't live in a celebrity bubble. No, I don't. I put my own rubbish out, I haven't got servants, I do my own laundry and I do all the ironing. I do not live in a celebrity bubble. So easy to be critical of people, and that, I, it makes me uncomfortable. If Emma Thompson flies across the world you know, on a jet and then takes part in the Extinction Rebellion because she's a public figure and she'll get a lot of journalists asking her questions, I'm uncomfortable, it's awkward. On the other hand, she is raising the topic. And yes, yeah, she's a hypocrite, just like we all are. All of us are hypocrites. But here's the argument that I really like, and this was the tweet. The inventor of the engine, and many argue about who really did it, used a horse every day of his life. He had to because that was what was available at the time while he figured out how to make it easier. Yes, of course he did. The inventor of the light bulb worked by candlelight. The inventor of steel had a house full of iron. 
People building cleaner, more renewable energy need to drive cars, ride on planes and heat their houses with gas because that is what is available to them at the time. Participating, this is the really key point, participating in the world does not disqualify you from trying to improve it. What a brilliant sentiment. What a brilliant thing. Participating in the world, I'm going to repeat it because I love it. Participating in the world, I got it wrong the first time, of course. Participating in the world as it is, like now, today, does not disqualify you from trying to improve it. So the knee-jerk, and I'm going to say ultra-right-wing or extremist right-wing reaction that use terms like um, uh, virtue signalling. You know, oh, they're just doing that to virtue signal. You just drive an electric car so you can virtue signal. No, I don't, you dumbo. No, I don't drive an electric car to virtue signal. I don't give a toss what other people think about me. I give a toss what we all do together. That's what's important. And if I'm in a position to drive an electric car now, and it is a privilege and I appreciate it, what people are seeing is electric cars working. You retrogressive, knee-jerk, ultra-right-wing extremist nutbag. Shut up, take your virtue signaling and stick it where the sun doesn't shine because you won't get any solar power up there anyway. Um, and now a report from when I was allowed to drive an utterly bonkers car a couple of weeks ago in, in basically along the poshest street in London. I mean, there really isn't anywhere posher. It's so exclusive. It's absolutely riddled with armed police to protect the people who live there. The royal family. You know, it's, uh, it was such a surprise to drive this thing. Now, this is a concept car built by DS Automobile, which is the prestige mark of the PSA group, posh Citroen to you and me. And they are bringing out some very impressive electric cars next year, and we'll be testing them early next year. But this concept uh, was to give an indication of what uh, the PSA group might be making in 2035. As you can see, it's fairly bonkers. Uh, it was fun to drive, but I had to be careful because underneath the impressive and bizarre exterior, was a Formula E car. So it did have a bit of oomph, which obviously, as I was right outside Prince Charles's house, I didn't experiment with. Well, that's it for this episode. Uh, just a quick reminder of a few things that we've got coming up. The fully charged guide to electric vehicles and clean technology. It's amazing, it's an amazing book. I mean, I've, it says my name on the front, but I really, I, I've written a couple of pages in it. It's really brilliant people who have uh, written, um, articles and explored things in it and mate it's beautifully laid out it looks gorgeous it's going to be out by christmas there's a link below here there if you want to order an advanced copy um the, the original copies you i think you get your name in the back it's too late for that now because they're already being printed but you can still get a copy in time for christmas i think uh so there's that which is very good um fully charged live usa on the first and second of february which we've talked about a, good, a great deal but some cars going to be there that i really didn't expect us to get so we're very excited about that There'll be more news about that coming up there's some great episodes coming up uh chelsea sexton went to the rivian headquarters and had an amazing look around what they're doing had an in-depth look at the cars how they're developing them i mean they are going great guns i've always been skeptical about electric vehicle startups, but there's no question that Tesla and Rivian are going to be here for some time and we're going to see a lot of their cars on the road. We already do with Tesla. And I really like that bit of news that Tesla has managed to turn around all the people, who knows what shorting is, but all the shorters, the people who shorted Tesla stocks have lost, I think, $1.4 billion, which is enormously good news. They're making a profit. They're churning out cars, they're selling them, there's enormous demand for them. It's not drying up like all these people try and say. They're doing really, really well and all the other manufacturers, including Volkswagen, who recently said it's not a, they're not a, a little startup. The Model 3 is a you know, proper car, a proper big car, I think they refer to it as. You know. So they're doing very well. But that, I, I won't talk about Tesla for loads of episodes now because I've talked about them too much. Um, so that is coming up from Chelsea Sexton. She's also been to see two other vehicles which are really exciting. One fully autonomous, one slightly bonkers. One really clever startup idea in Los Angeles. So that's coming soon. Uh, we're doing this brilliant mini-series with Maddie Moat, who is who had, up until very recently had never been in, let alone driven an electric car. She is now leasing an electric car. She's learning how to charge it at home, charge it on the road what the different charge connectors are, how you use the chargers, the absolute basic guide 
to uh, starting starting to drive an electric car if you've never done it before. This is a, a really important series of, of shows that we've wanted to do for a long time and it's just finding the way to do it. Well, we've managed to do it. So those are coming out, that's before Christmas. Helen Chersky is going to look at uh, new, uh, new tyre manufacturers that are developing tyres for electric cars that do not produce uh, dangerous particulates when you drive them along the road. Johnny Smith is, among many other things, he's going to be test driving the, um, the uh, DS E-Tents Crossback, the new electric car from DS. And Johnny and I are making a rather silly Christmas episode. <laughs> a Christmas special. So there's, there's many, many gorgeous and lumpy organic uh, episodes to come. So that is a very, very good reason to subscribe to Fully Charge if you haven't already. Uh, so you make sure you don't miss them or click the little bell thing. Uh, if you're interested in supporting us on Patreon, please do have a look at the Patreon link uh, underneath this video. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.